Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. There you go. First card down. You see it. Welcome, everybody, to the Get Geek Podcast. If you're the first one to see that, that's $10 to Amazon. Boom. If you're the first one to see that, you got $10. And you know what? I got 20 more. So, boom. There you go. <laughs> we are back. Episode 40. Um, you might hear a little bit of noise in the background. That's my family. It is Christmas Eve. And I might, and we're gonna try to make this quick so that, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure they're gonna call me up pretty soon because we're also gonna be celebrating, uh, one of our nephew's, uh, birthdays. Um, and yeah, boom. <laughs> Here we are. Merry Christmas, everybody. Christmas Eve, special Christmas episode. Booyah. <laughs> and um, I'm not gonna let anybody know when I'm gonna show the next two cards. I'm just gonna show the next two um, next two cards whenever randomly. So if you guys want those ten dollars, you gotta watch the whole thing to find it, <laughs> to find it, and get it. Um, before we even get into any topics, uh, I gotta say I don't know if I like this new um, update to Pokemon Go. Uh, I feel like I'm like carrying a, a Tamagotchi now because I got to take care of my freaking Pokemon. Well, really, you don't have to, but like because it's there, I feel like I kind of have to. <laughs> have you seen this? Have you seen it yet? Like you basically got to feed your yeah. Pokemon and you got to play with it, battle with it, and get like and, and you get hearts. I don't know. I, I don't even know if it's even worth it to tell you the truth. Um. Supposedly, people are saying the rumor is is that it's going to be connected to Mega Form later on. So, like the better friendship you have with your Pokemon, the easier it is to get Mega Form. I don't know, dude. I'm not. I don't even know if that's true or not. But hell, I'm just doing it just cause. Um. Uh, yeah. And then that, so, but I mean, it's it is kind of pretty cool. The other thing too, um. Rise of Skywalker. This is the only, other than um, Solo, which I still haven't seen to this day. It's the only Star Wars movie that I haven't seen an opening weekend, and it's a little bit of my own fault because I watched all these spoiler reviews, and it just doesn't sound good. And it's scaring the heck out of me because I don't want to be disappointed at another Star Wars movie after I saw Last The Last Jedi. Because that one kind of hurt a lot. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know. Well, to, uh, to talk about the question you asked before, uh, yeah, I did see the new update to Pokemon Go. And it seems like they're just pulling on your heartstrings, kind of like how if you play Fallout 4 and you have that dog with you, you don't have to, like, look after him. But if he gets hurt, you know your ass is going to go run over and make sure he gets a med pack. But you don't have to. He'll get better. He'll follow you. It's not an obligation. But that moral capacity inside of you just says, you know, you got to take care of the Pokemon now. You got to feed it. You got to play mm -hmm. with it. You got to do that stuff. Yeah, because it's there and it's showing you, like, oh, it doesn't – it's not happy. You know, you got you to gotta make it happy by – feeding it and playing it's, with it just, <laughs> it's like a fleshed out version of uh, uh pokemon yellow where you would turn around and ask pikachu what's going on and he'd just be straight up or she would be straight up just like i don't like you <laughs> I don't like you'd like to be with you but i don't like you and then um so uh just to just to say a little bit i get how you know it's cool for some photos it's cool to get to know your pokemon more especially if you try a lot to get that pokemon and then you want to like walk around with it but honestly, it just seems like kind of a side thing. I don't think I see it becoming a major option into the game. Uh, if they do start bringing out like the mega stuff and the mega evolutions and then the EX evolutions, it's just honestly going to make the game a little more difficult and confusing considering there's no real aspect of using it in game just yet. Too if bad. they had to bring in mega in like EX evolutions and stone evolutions, then the whole battling process would have to be thrown out. You'd have to revamp it. You'd have to rethink about it. You have to like essentially turn it into a real Pokemon game. 
which it already took like what a couple of years just to bring in battling. True. Uh, I just don't see that much happening that recently. Well, see, uh, like, but other... I think the mega form might go into the PV- PvP aspect, dude. They might try to bring it in somehow. I don't know. Um, if anything, it might just be like the closest thing I could see is if you do have full like max connection with your Pokemon and you do like a special move, it'll maybe do like a mega special move yeah. where they like yeah, that's just for I'm that thinking. little bit. Yep, exactly. But um, honestly, other than that, when we were talking about um, what is it, Fall of Skywalker? Or rise, or, the Rise of Skywalker. Rise, rise of Skywalker. So. I've heard left and right different contradicting things about it. I've heard some people say it's a good slow ending to the series. I've heard some people say it just sucked. Um, really, right now, all my focus when it comes to movies is, yeah, I get it. Maybe it's decent for the ending of the Skywalker trilogy and the Skywalker, well, not trilogy, but saga. Um, really, what I'm looking out of the universe right now is hoping that they turn the star of Fallen Order as a movie star, essentially bringing him from the games to the movies. Because that was, if you haven't seen any of the footage or any of the plots or something like that, it's a great game, great acting, and the guy that you play as is a real person who auditioned for that specific role. So if they were to actually bring him into acting, I could see a whole movie line coming off of Fallen Order, which so, would be a nice revamp. So you want them to take the game and turn that into the movie? No, essentially not like take the game and make a game movie or, you know, like take the same storyline. I'm just saying if you randomly after the game – if they weren't planning on making another, which I doubt they are, and if they are, it's going to be for a long time. If they took him and randomly put him into another issue, not like the same story, but just the guy, it, he seems like a perfect fit. He's iconic enough. He has that that face where you're going to recognize him wherever you go, especially after the game. And if you guys don't know where he's from, uh, what was he from? He was a really bad kid on one of these early uh, TV shows. But once you see him, you'll know who I'm talking about. But um, not take the story directly, but if they just took him, the impending whatever story was going on, like if you threw him into... Uh, like randomly, if it wasn't the Ray story or anything else, nothing about Finn, nothing about all those others. If you just took a random story and then all of a sudden halfway through, they were like, you know, we know a Jedi that might be able to help us out. And it was him. That would be a perfect tie in for having a new line of movies start while also having a fresh base to start off. of. Uh, so it doesn't have to just the char- have to be- just the character. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be the same story, but if you just took him and his backstory and placed them into a new story, it would be a decent way of revamping it without having to do too much work. And it'd be pretty neat. I think I would watch it, definitely, because the acting in the game, it's great acting. He already has the lines down. He already knows the information. I actually know that the actor himself plays a lot of Star Wars games uh, from, you know, like being a kid. But I think right now he is kind of what the Star Wars universe needs right now. Um, If we had, let's say, uh, that one Star Wars game, Force Awakens, I believe, where the guy was holding his lightsaber backwards. If they took those two games and then eventually made like a short TV spinoff, I'd watch it. It was a pretty decent storyline. It was uh, it was kind of riveting. It made me interactive. It made it really uh it really dragged me in but there's something about that game if you haven't played it yet i would say go play it it's kind of like the legend of zelda um i can't think about it but uh the last game that just came out of legend of zelda how it was kind of 
a triumph of a game. It was the the pinnacle of like how awesome a game could be. Breath of the Wild. If you Breath of the Wild. If you haven't had a chance to play this game, it's like the Breath of the Wild for the Star Wars video game industry. It's unlike Fallen Order. Fallen Order is usually hard, a little wonky, or uh, Force Awakens is a little wonky. This one is smooth, dynamic. It's very visually pleasing. The sound, the music, and the scores is amazing. It gets you really uh, involved in what's going on. So I see that this this last movie is probably a flop, but to me it really doesn't matter because right here you guys have a nugget of gold that you can kind of take and run with. If you stuck him in a full Star Wars uniform like he is in the game, threw him in uh, Star Wars, the the land at Disneyland, people would go crazy. It's just kind of... People are over Ray, people are over Finn, people are over kind of that whole story. And that last movie didn't really do it any justice. So I say there's there's a nugget of gold that Disney can work with that they really need to, but I doubt they will. Because these last movies from this this whole storyline hasn't really been compelling and been drawing you in it hasn't the first few movies you would want to go see it because you really needed to see the story but this is kind of a give or take i haven't known a lot of star wars fans to be like i don't think i want to go see that until these last few movies and that's kind of a big thing well the thing about it is is they started off good with force awakens i mean that movie brought everybody back but Ryan Johnson messed it all up by throwing everything that J.J. Abrams set up away in The Last Jedi. And then now in mm-hmm. Rise of Skywalker, I feel – or not I feel, but I, um, I've heard from all the um, spoiler reviews and stuff that I've watched that he basically uh, – he didn't – he basically tried to fix everything that Ryan Johnson did plus try to do a storyline plus added another storyline in between that. And it was just too much into one. And and so like, it, it was too compact. There's too much going on. There's too many compelling, like, contradicting stories going on to really focus on one. Uh, there's no really saving this timeline anymore. There, the damage has been done. And it's the, like and then the going end, back to the episode one, you know? And it's then the ending, like, I'm not going to spoil it, but um, – from what I heard, it's just not the way I wanted to end, um, and, and I don't know. But I mean, it basically is the end of the saga, so it's the end of the Skywalker saga. And what they're planning on doing now is starting a brand new saga with the Star Wars name on it. So hopefully, they will take the character from the video game and do something with him because he is canon. Like they've mm-hmm. they've came. Disney has said that anything that's in the newer games that they make. Are all canon, you mm-hmm. know, and all the all the animated series are canon and stuff like that. So hopefully they do something they, with that, and maybe even take it, um, some of the Mandalorian stuff and start something with that as well. Because I mean, right now to me, the Mandalorian show is hitting out of the park. It's top notch, two thumbs up. Um, but it seems show. like it's one of those. It seems like it's one of those things that won't last. Well, we'll see because we yeah, haven't seen we haven't seen the last too. episode yet. Um, last episode is this week, I think. I'm not sure unless they take a break, which I would be pretty pissed about because <laughs> like they left you yeah, on a cliffhanger. Like they left you on a cliffhanger yeah, on that last episode, so like I want to see what's gonna happen now. Like I need to see what happens. So, um, but it's a good show. I mean. Plus, they really haven't finished the whole storyline between with what's going on with him and Baby Yoda. So, like you know, I think season two will be like the whole th- like maybe I don't know who knows. But I've liked it. I've liked it already. You know, and the last episode is this week, hopefully. Um, and so yeah, I mean, those are all good stuff. Like the games are good, the show is good, but they just need to make good movies now. And they've kind of hit and miss with the movies. So we'll see where it goes from there. Um, and then what they need to do is hand the movies over to John Favreau. That's what I'm saying. Like, give the whole property to John Favreau. I think John Favreau will do an awesome job, like he's been doing with Marvel and and some Who of the knows? Disney products. 
who knows? He might be even that key to bring in, you know, like the chef's table into the Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, you have, you know, these really high named chefs who John Favreau knows personally from those other shows to like come in and do like a special one off of this dish that's only from the Star Wars universe. There's so many things that can be done just because. You know, there's that open door, but it's up to Disney and Disney's at that point where they can choose literally what they want to do and nobody can really say any different. Even if we want and we beg and we plead, it's not really going to make any difference uh, in what's going on. That's but what he we has, saw the, the I think, changing of the movie. I think he has the brains for it and he also has the love for the Star Wars lore and the Star Wars story to where I think he'll take very great care of that mm -hmm. property. I don't know. Um, I just I'm a little afraid because it might be kind of like that thing where you're kind of in over your head where you're given like a show called The Mandalorian and you have other projects going on. But if they went up to you and just said, hey, John Favreau, here's the Star entire Wars. Star Wars movie universe, do, do it. I think it might be a little much. Yeah, I think so, too. But hold on. Before we go any further. Boom. Second card. That's twenty dollars, or this is another ten dollar card. That is twenty dollars already. I have ten dollars left. You do, will not know when I'm gonna be putting it up, so keep on watching. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not even gonna put it up until the end of the show. <laughs> keep on watching to find out. But there you go. Boom. First come, first serve. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah. And then um so um. Let's go on to you. What is up? So, recently with the Christmas coming up and the new year, and you know things are getting a little tight when it comes to money. A lot of people know that when it comes to buying gifts for people, buying dinners and all that stuff. I'm just going to say two things. One is just an observation I had, and two is my topic of uh, talking about today. Uh, first, my observation is I've come to the realization that Christmas should really only be for children. <laughs> get get them the gifts. Give them the wonderment. I don't know. There's too many kids, though. There's way too many kids. No. <laughs> what? Would you want to buy stuff for kids in the family? Or would you want to buy stuff for kids in the family plus their parents, plus your uncles and your nephews? And, you know, it kind of gets a little crazy. Both is if kind it was of, just for the kids. Both is kind of a bad choice because we, we got too big of a family. <laughs> We really do, but that's what I'm saying. If we had to choose uh, between the boys and then, you know, all the brothers and sisters and everybody going on, I think, you know, like I would put more effort into making sure that the boys had a good Christmas because for us, the wonderment's well, over. Well, We're not really going only if you put a Only if you put a cap on the age. <laughs> yeah, no, we're talking like 16 to 18 is probably like cut I'd, off range. I say go lower. <laughs> Well, I mean, all right, you're going to give them, like, maybe a $20 gift card uh, to Amazon or something, but uh, honestly... Let's just say it's straining, on the um, po it's straining on the pockets when you got a huge family. Yeah, so those are the times when you really need to think to yourself, like, is it really worth buying gifts for everybody else just for them to go through the same crap to buy you something that you're probably not going to use and would have an easier time just buying for yourself? I just thought I would bring that up, you know, just a little observation. Although, um, I mean, it is fun to get stuff, though. I don't know. It is. It, it is fun, but, you know, maybe if we're going to do something, you got a big family, like, I know one gift is even straining a little bit for some people, but maybe keep a, a cap to it. Realize that, yeah, it's a great time of the year, but a lot of people, like, just like me and all the other people I know at work, it's a lot of time off. It's a lot of money taken away from your paychecks. And then you got to pay extra for other stuff. It's just not really an equation that really adds up. It's not. It's kind of like crossing your fingers and hoping you can make it out of it. But if you really saved up and like do all that stuff, you, you probably will be fine. But <clears throat> I would probably be fine realizing like walking in on a Christmas morning with a bunch of family and the kids got presents, and we didn't. We just kind of, like, hung around. I think I'd be fine. But that's just me, honestly. I know a lot of people have a bunch of different conversations with other people. Um, 
about, you know, this time of year. And you maybe do it just to keep the, the festive feelings high. You might do it just to, you know, feel connected with the family, make them feel like they're appreciated. But I just thought I'd bring it up considering I've had this conversation with about three other people and they all kind of feel the same way that if it was more uh, associated to just children, <laughs> maybe 13 to 14 should be like cut off range. But, you know, like I, I just came back from Target right now on Christmas Eve. Holy crap. Speaking like, of holy speak, crap. speaking speaking of man, um, because I came from Target too, and yes, holy crap, um, uh, people, this is a message to all you people out there, dude. Why are you all such pro procrastinators? Why do you all wait till the last minute to go get something to buy something? Holy hell, dude! It's Christmas Eve, bro. Why is there so many people in a store? What are you all doing? And the thing is, too, I was there just to grab something quick. I was like, I just want to grab something real quick. Like, I just, I know that Target has kombucha and they have it for pretty cheap, cheaper than the grocery stores I go to. So I just wanted to get a couple of bottles of kombucha. And I was like, I'm going to run in, grab the kombucha, pay for it at the self paying thing. And just bounce. Bro. Mm -hmm. I waited 10 minutes in line. Probably longer than 10 minutes to tell the truth. I don't know. it, But it. Because it felt way longer than 10 minutes. Like it was a gigantic ass line. And not just that. But like. Dodge, the do Playing dodging. Dodgeball with people. It is ridiculous. And then. Trying to get it out of the park. I should have I should have known when I saw the parking lot. I shouldn't even went in because the parking lot was freaking full. I'll just, but I was like, I was like, it's Christmas Eve. It, it shouldn't be that packed. You know what I'm saying? Like, why is Target so packed on Christmas Eve? Like, y'all should have done all your shopping beforehand. Like, Christmas Eve should just be like last minute stuff. Like, like just a couple bottles of kombucha, <laughs> maybe or something. Uh, I'll tell <laughs> you something because I did the same thing. I went in. <laughs> Just thinking, you know, I'm going to grab a pack of gum. I'm going to get a drink. I'm going to maybe pull out some money and then just go home. Going in, it's like Black Friday all over again. And also, Real. I've seen this like three or four times. You assholes <laughs> will go buy a video game in the tech section and then go, hey, can I check out my entire cart Duh. at this tiny little <laughs> thing? And I'm just there trying to ask where your batteries are or what kind of film you guys have. I'm not trying to sit there thinking you cracked the code and you broke the system. No, you're just making an inconvenience for everybody, but you probably don't care. So once you walk out of there, it's no problem for you. But yeah, everybody else trying to like pack up all your crap on that tiny little tech desk. Dude. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. And just, I've seen it way too much for it to be one of those things where it's just like, I guess it's just like once or twice, but no, I saw a guy do it. <laughs> Somebody with another part went right behind him. And I was like, I know you don't have a question. You just want to make sure you, you can do the same thing right after. <laughs> it's crazy, dude. And then, like, I see people like doing their freaking Christmas shopping. It's Christmas Eve. Why are you doing your Christmas shopping now? <laughs> like and the thing is, dude, oh man, that's why I kind of wish like, that's why I kind of want to be in a better, uh, I want to try to get to a better neighborhood because um, gross online grocery shopping is gonna be the thing. I, sometimes I just want some a little. I, sometimes I just want a tad a tiny bit of groceries, and I kind of want it to be delivered. But here's the thing, though: if you live in the ghetto, we don't have it yet. <laughs> but I know for a fact that but the suburbs have I'll, it. Nah, dude, I'll tell you. Like uh, that's that's our go-to. Like we don't even go to the store anymore. We'll like. We'll get our groceries from Amazon Fresh that same day by like six, seven o'clock. It's right there at the front door. Right. Um, and they do the they do the whole nine yards. They give you dry ice. They give you all this extra stuff that you can use. And the cool thing about it is the the one next to us. When they pack all of our stuff at the Whole Foods, they will put frozen water bottles in there. Mm. Uh, hold on, a. Hey. So yeah, I'll, I'll get to this last one real quick. Uh, just a heads up, I just recently bought Borderlands 3, and your boy got Pokemon Shield and, well, Sword. Um, 
But I've been playing Borderlands 3 the first day I played. Oh, my God, it was trash. It was like playing a multiplayer game on a 50v50 map while running, you know, like a modem from the 1990s. I couldn't even walk around a corner because somebody would shoot me and those pixels would make me lag for like 10 to 20 seconds. Mm. And it happened every time. Every person I killed right at the end, I know it would be too many pixels going on and I'd have to wait like five seconds before I finally saw them die. And in a game like Borderlands, you can't be doing that. So finally, as of yesterday, they just added some hot fixes. Everything is smooth now. Not a problem in the world. But what, what are you playing on? Xbox or uh, Xbox One? Xbox One. It, it had uh, fixes on all platforms. All platforms had the same issues with the uh. servers. Yeah, even even offline would be laggy as hell. Right on. But hey, uh, from there. Okay. Yeah. So with all these new hot fixes and all this stuff came updates for the game, which is you know especially on the rolling out of a game like this a lot of people especially borderlands has a huge community of glitches there are channels on youtube that are dedicated to just this stuff because the game is awesome but it is still kind of buggy at all platforms um so one of the biggest things recently was that playing on playing offline granted you times 9 experience and times 9 money to me i don't think that's fair even if playing offline, even playing offline, giving them times four doesn't really seem that fair. Just because you're playing offline doesn't mean the game should be easier for you. But there have been glitches where you can play a game. And as soon as you defeat the boss, you just dashboard, quit out, go offline, go back on times nine EXP right then and there. And that goes for all money. It goes for all items. You can duplicate items. But what came out after this patch was almost all glitches were wiped away. No more times nine. Um, As of right now, my issue with this game is still, even if you're playing offline, you still get a boost in EXP and boost in experience and, uh, well, experience and money. I feel that even if you are playing offline, there's a chance that eventually you will go online. So I feel like playing offline and giving you that boost of playing this solo game. It's still a solo game. You can play co-op. You can play online. But originally, it's still going to be solo. I think playing offline shouldn't really give you that edge. But if they feel like playing offline should give you that much of an edge to where you get better items, a times four multiplier in getting rare items. I mean, I get it. I get it if you want to just make it easier on them people. But I say with this next patch, just make it even. I I don't really understand why you would still need that kind of stuff. I mean, maybe, maybe I have something different in mind. But Gabe, what do you think? Do you think playing offline should give you a better edge? It's like if you played on the Switch playing Pokemon, but you weren't connected to the Nintendo Online, you, like, started out with the Shiny. Like, I, I just don't really see what, well, what is well, coming it, from that. It, it, all depends, it, give, it all depends on giving me an edge on on what, you know what I'm saying? Like, But, like, uh, okay, well, okay, let me, let me spell this one out so it's a little more clear, because um, if I was to play online and I was to play offline... I would still have to play the same levels. I don't see why the difference of online and offline should give you that edge because you're still playing the same game. That's kind of where I see it. Mm, I don't know because like the the thing is is uh you know where do you get where do you get the edge at? You're like cuz the for me the fun things is the fun thing about games is playing online against like I'm a PVP type person. Mm-hmm. Uh PVE is just a little bit um too predictable for me. I don't know. Like it just doesn't excite me as much. But yeah, see, but if you play offline, and then and playing offline kind of gives you um, a special like ability or gun that helps you in the PvP world, then it gives you a reason to play offline, and then playing offline becomes more interesting. 
You know what I'm saying? True, but see, that's that's exactly kind of where it is. You could play the same amount of time online, same game. You're never going to see anybody. Play offline, same amount of time. You're not going to see anybody. But at that one point where they both go into PvP, mm-hmm. one has like fifty thousand dollars more, has an edge, has better weapons, has better gear. For what reason? Just because you played offline, there's still just kind of like a why. Mm. If it was like 1.5 EXP, that'd work. If it was like 2, okay, that's fine. But how it is right now, if you were to kill one legendary boss, you would have to kill it like 16 times in the original game just to get the weapon that you would probably get defeating it the second time Right on offline. Like there's, I don't really get that. I don't know. I haven't played Borderlands enough to know. <laughs> like, you know, Yeah, and this was, you know. this was my um, first game playing ever since Borderlands 1. I played a little bit of Borderlands 2, and it was kind of fun. But um, there's something about this where I even did a little test this morning. I played an hour on Alyssa's account and an hour on my account. And one was offline, one was online. And I went back into co-op afterwards so we both were on the same part one was five levels higher and that when it comes to like 10 to 15 range is kind of a blot it's kind of a lot i just see that you know i really don't understand i don't see where they're coming from but it's there it's what it is so if you guys do want to know and play borderlands 3 play offline and you'll get an edge and then once you're around 15 20 or even max level 50 and you're getting guardian levels Go back on the PvP, and you're going to be like everybody else. You're not going to be struggling at all. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not really hating on it. I'm just kind of confused on why they really decided that that was kind of something that they wanted to implement. Well, I mean, I, I guess, like, because they because the offline version is the campaign, right? Or is no, it both, or is the, it both campaigns, full- offline and online? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. It's the same game. There's no oh, difference. But you just get a more higher um, multiplier on offline. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that, multiplier yeah, doesn't that's, come in later. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. that. And and just as of yesterday, it was moved from nine times. So you got nine times the amount. Essentially, everything you killed, you would get an epic or a legendary weapon. It's just ridiculous. But then again, I am kind of sad because I wasn't playing around that time, so I couldn't make you full use of it. Um, so yeah, I'm still a broke boy on that game. So whatever. Uh, uh, I don't know, man. I, I have no. Yeah, say. but uh, <laughs> so on that, I guess you know, games do their thing. Uh, that actually might be a reason why I'm going to start playing Sword today and see what the hype's all about. Um, <laughs> so yeah, later on probably. Uh, which actually brings me into this next thing. I'll probably give Gabe the information to put it up if I have like a friend's code or something, if you guys want to add me and play um, or fight me on Pokemon Sword and Shield. But so a little news for the holiday. Uh, something did come up recently a few days ago, which I am going to have to deal with uh, personally. It's just some personal stuff going on. Not too big, not too crazy, nothing you guys need to be worried about or, you know, ask. But um, so I may be taking the next podcast in the next week to be dealing with this it's not going to stop me from creating content it's not going to stop me from working on projects it's just as of right now um you know me and Alyssa both go to college me and Alyssa both work sometimes even two jobs um we have a home we have a dog we have bills and stuff so life does kind of catch up every once in a while life things happen um you know life just happens so Uh, I'm sure a lot of you out there can understand. But those of you who I doubt there are, who don't get it, I'm sorry, but, you know, things just happen. You got to deal with what you got to do. But I will be back probably the one after, or maybe even the one after. It just may take, like, one or two weeks. But um, it's not going to stop me, so you may not see me for a couple episodes. I don't know what Gabe has planned, if he's going to bring in you know, Beard Man or Clint or someone different, maybe try to get one of the boys well, in while they're there. We'll like, see. guilt them into doing it. We'll see. It just might be a couple of solo episodes if I can't get anybody. But, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know, but it it's not like they're missing anything, really, because uh, we haven't done much of other content 
lately in a while anyways. <laughs> yeah, but while we do work on that, um, I just want to make sure that the people who do watch or the people who watch in the future and then come back to this, um, just realize that, you know, uh, something's come up, I'm going to deal with it, but it's not going to stop me. And even if we do not create that much content as of right now, you know, it is what it is. We do this for our own pleasure. It's not like we're trying to make sure we make it big. We're doing this for our own pleasure. We talk about the things that we like. And if you guys like watching it, that's awesome. But, um, you know, it is what it is. You guys enjoy your holidays. Enjoy the New Year's. And afterwards, we'll, you guys will see me again. I'm not really sure what Gabe has planned. If it is going to be a couple solo episodes. Uh, yeah. Who knows what's going to come up. Uh, it's probably going to be a full hour of just Pokemon Go talk. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> hey, that's uh, yeah, not the only so, thing I'm into. It might be me ranting about Star Wars, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, uh, let's just say, let's just say the uh, next, the next episode might just be me ranting about Star Wars because I do plan on watching the movie probably this week sometime. Um, mm -hmm. So, look forward to that. It'll probably be like a full on review and what I think and everything like that because, I even though we kind of went over it a little bit today, but that was just fr from what I've heard from reviews. So I'm gonna actually mm -hmm. go watch it and then have my own uh, thoughts and opinions on it, and then we're you know that'll probably be the episode next week. Um, if Alex doesn't make it back in time for the episode after that, uh, that episode will be kind of unsure. I'll have to come up with something for that, and if I can't get anybody else to come co-host with me, then it might just be another solo episode, and I might be ranting about something else. Who knows? But yeah. <laughs> All right, but so go. as of that, I will probably be back by then, but if not, I will give you guys an update, but I probably will. I don't see anything that's really going to happen that's going to take me out of it a little more, but uh, just so you guys know, um, there may be some other things that are going to be, you know, happening. Like, I know I haven't yet played Pokemon Sword yet, but I do know I want to go into it a little more, um, seeing as how Omega Ruby and Sapphire, all the way back to, like, Diamond and Pearl, I love making sure I can genetically modify all my Pokemon to make sure it has perfect IVs, nice movesets. Um, so if anything, that might be a new line of videos I might look into just to make sure... You know, because when Pokemon people play Pokemon, they like Pokemon. But there's that other small little side that all they talk about is IV, elemental status, move stabs, um, elemental stabs. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. If you don't, just enjoy Pokemon and don't worry about it. But uh, that's that's the aspect I love of this game. So I'm going to flush it out a little bit today and see what's up. And if there's some new um, video paths down here. I then have to realize uh, how the hell I'm going to record a Switch screen. Um, you might have to get an Elgato. I was just thinking about that. Aren't those like a couple hundred bucks? Um, I got mine's used for under a hundred and it works just fine. Okay, that's not bad. I could probably mm -hmm. look into that. I believe I got mine's for around 80. And it was off of Amazon too, which is the crazy part. Oh, that's not that's not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll be looking into that. We'll be playing these new games. Just know that, uh, you know, when the holidays comes up, stuff happens. Just like you see Gabe with family upstairs. And uh, Oh, uh, another thing about the Elgato is if you know how to install it into your PC, um, that version is a little cheaper as well. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, then, um, then, yeah the, actually, then the external. I'm actually planning on giving my current computer, which was already a couple grand to Alyssa and I kind of want to start working on a new one so if anything I might just like throw it into the build uh just to see what's up mm -hmm. but um so yeah if anything we'll do what's going on so I'm just gonna say Gabe this might be the best chance for the last card the last what card card oh or was it just the well two? uh no I have another I have one more card but before I show that and uh, before we end the episode, I kind of just want to uh, put out there uh, – well, not put out there. I kind of just want to talk about it just because, like, really, like, there's – like, not even, like, talk, talk about it. I just want to put it out in the world, I guess, uh, just because there's no one else for me to tell it to. I don't know. But um, uh, I go through this cycle of music. It'll be, like, metal. 
uh in like or it'll start off with like indie and then i go back to metal and then i go back to electronics um and right now i'm on, right now i'm on the electronics wave again because i just got done with my metal phase for some weird reason and it goes in a cycle it goes in a wheel it just does that it rotates over and over and over kind of like that you know and uh um i went and revisited uh crystal castles album two and I got to say that album is very good. Like free it's freaking good. <laughs> I don't know if you guys um ever listen to Crystal Castles and uh don't get it wrong if you if you're searching it cuz there is a metal band called Crystal Castle. It's the mm-hmm. um it's the indie electro band Crystal Castle. It's uh it's basically a, a a guy who DJs, a drummer and then a girl singer. And that's basically the band itself. Um, I don't know if you want to say it's a band or not. I don't know. It kind of is because it's a group. I think it's a group. Yeah, it's a group. Um, but they have a few albums. Um, and most of the albums are actually pretty good. Their newer stuff is a little bit weirder. I don't know. I, I'm, I can't really get into it um, just because there's uh, it, it turns too poppy a little bit. But the more electronic version of their earlier albums, um, like Crystal Castle's the um, self-titled and then Crystal Castles, the two album, um, those are amazing albums. And the 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 music that they made, I wouldn't want to say that it's ahead of their times, only because I did hear them in uh, mixes at clubs and stuff like that. And um, I did hear some of their singles and stuff. The only thing is they don't get really they don't get radio play, but it is such good electronic type music. I don't know. It's it's awesome. Um, also, uh, it, and that made me kind of go back to Justice, the first Justice album. Amazing as well. <laughs> I'm going to say this too. I am rediscovering some of MGMT's management, if you guys don't know. Some of their earlier stuff was pretty damn good. Dude, it's not just good. And it's weird too. The radio just found them, and the, <laughs> and they've been giving yeah. the, they've been giving the radio a little bit of uh, flack because they're like, you know, we put that song out like a long time ago, right? <laughs> the radio just mm-hmm. the radio just barely starting to play it, uh, which is weird because like their their album came out so long ago, but they're just barely getting radio play now. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. which is kind of good for them because that just means more residuals and money for them and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, MGMT is very good. Um, with, with that, um, MGMT, uh, shoot, I forgot the name of the band. Oh, I forgot the name of the group. It's like Midnight something or, or, um, I don't know, but yeah, um, in the oh, long uh, lines of those, they're really ne- good. Uh, it, I think you're thinking about, um, neo-African Swedish lesbian pop group, trip hop, Nefertiti's Fjord. Nah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so, but I am thinking about this. Boom. Let it focus. There you go. Last card, everybody. And with that said, we have rambled on a bit long or not even. It's, this is kind of one of our shortest episodes. But with that said, there you guys go. Um, that is the last card. That is $30. So first come, first serve. Whoever gets it, gets it. Use it. Buy something with it. Who knows? Do something with it. I don't care. Um, and yes, that's don't the, do something with it. We that's the care. show. That's the show. Our love for you guys for sticking with us. Um, the little amount of people that we have right now. Please help us uh, grow. Um, we're trying to at least try to maybe get to 100 subscribers by uh, the, um, by not even the end of this year, but next year or so. But I mean, we look forward to doing more. Um, I just like getting on here and rambling on st- about stuff and all the things and everything like that. So look forward to more of that. And so with that said, everybody, Merry Christmas. Have a happy new go. year. And we will see you guys on the next episode. I know this, I know this says, it looks like it says get.